Hey everyone, so today we're going to kind of continue where we left off from the previous video uh, where we made our tiled map, the very first map, and we added this polyline object uh, to a collision layer, um, object layer, on our tiled map program. Um, and so with that, we're just going to jump right back into the code. Um, all we have so far is just that cat image that kind of follows our box um, body that we have in our box 2D world and it can jump and move left and right and what we want to do is to render our new uh, tiled map, the TMX file here, into our world. Um, and to do that it's pretty simple and straightforward. This video is probably not going to be too long uh, so we'll just do... you're gonna need an orthogonal tiled map renderer. Um, we'll just call that TMR and then you're gonna need a tiled map of course uh, to keep track of that abstracted tiled data. Um, and then we can go down here and initialize them. Um, so that's TMR, or I'm sorry, we want to initialize our map first. Equals uh, new TMX map loader. Um, and what that does is it will allow you to create a new instance of a tiled map object and it kind of goes through that TMX file and parses out all the information and layer and objects and, and everything that your tiled map contained it'll create that tiled map object for you um, and because we have it in the maps folder under our assets we need to do maps uh, test map.tmx okay so there's our map. That's it. That's all we have to do for that. And then to make our renderer work, we just need a new orthogonal tiled map renderer, and we can pass it our map. And if you'll notice, it says batch down here. Um, you can pass in your own uh, sprite batch. Uh, so anytime you apply, let's say, like shaders or something that kind of go with it, uh, you won't have to do it on your own down the road. Uh, like. I believe it's tmr dot get batch yeah and then you can set the shader to it um, that's really it doesn't matter how you do it you can load in your own batch or you can just get the batch it's using and apply shaders but that's that's for other topics that I'll actually go into down the road um, shaders are pretty fun to mess around with uh, but anyway so we have our map and our tiled map renderer all set up now. All we had to do was pass it our map so it knows what map it will be rendering on screen for us. Um, and then don't forget, as always, uh, you will want to dispose of those objects. Okay, and we didn't add anything else, just those two. Um, and that should be it for the initialization. So now we're going to actually want them to render something onto the screen. So all we need is our TMR, and we go to render, and that's it. Um, but keep in mind, as we did with our batch, you need to set that uh, view uh, matrix of the camera that you're using so it'll know to still kind of follow along with the player and everything. So you go to TMR dot set view and then you'll just pass it the camera object. You don't have to do camera combined because I believe it does all that for you or just gets the boundaries or something but regardless it's the same effect. Um, so let's see what else. Um, I believe that should be all we need um, so why don't we check it out. So after this, we'll probably be going into uh, how to get that polyline object incorporated into our Box 2D world. Um, and that, that is a little bit more involved. Uh, we'll be using change, that, change shapes and uh, just to get rid of that. The, I believe they're called ghost collisions. Um, and I'll explain that more in depth when we actually get to it in the next video. Um, so yeah, looks like uh, we got our map. It's loading. Um, we can kind of just float around here ominously. Um, and 
yeah, that's the expected output. That's exactly what we wanted. But you'll notice that the polyline is not affecting our world yet, and that is just because we haven't actually parsed the object layer of our tiled map and created those box 2D objects and threw them into our world. It isn't that smart um, because we haven't really applied the interconnection between the two. Um, so that's what we'll be doing in the next video. But for now, uh, this is what we want. And in fact, you know, we might as well just update the player's position and stuff. Um, so let's see, 32. Let's make that 40 and 40. How about that? Um, and this can probably be 40 and 30. We'll see what that gives us. But again, overall, this is, this is fairly easy. Um, a lot of people tend to have troubles with the load part because of how their working directory is set up. Um, but this is, this is just a good example if you're just using IntelliJ. It's pretty easy in IntelliJ, honestly. Um, the directory really just works for you. Um, you don't have to do a lot of extra steps. Okay, so uh, not really what I was going for. Um, what am I doing down here? Is that position divided by ppm? Um, let me try it without that real quick. Maybe that'll give us a better absolute position on our map. Um, 40, 40. Yeah, because that should have been up a little bit higher. Um, okay, now I have no idea where we are. <laughs> Uh, so I'll just change that back. Uh, we'll mess around with where we should be in the next video. I'll just put that at 1, just add 100 on those. Um, that should be a little bit better. Um, but yeah, so for this video, we are all done, and we rendered our map. We have our map, and now we're going to get into actually making the collidable objects. So with that, I'll see you in the next video.